virtually all of the analysis techniques we've encountered in our class have been for linear differential equations with what we call constant coefficients. That means that for the variables x and u, the only way they appear is with derivatives of those variables and constant coefficients for them. An example of a nonlinear system would be this one. This is a differential equation because of the dots. But also this 2x squared is a term that gives x a non-constant coefficient. It's the same as saying 2x times x. This is much harder to solve, but that doesn't mean we can't analyze the system. And the way we do that is with linearization. The idea is that many nonlinear systems actually behave like linear systems if you're talking about relatively small variations near an operating point. So if we were to look at this system, we might ask, what happens near the operating point? In other words, what happens if x stays in the neighborhood of 1? Where do nonlinear systems occur? Uh, a very common example is fluid resistance. We gave the formula Q equals 1 over R times P1 minus P2. And this is actually a uh, law for a fluid resistance for laminar flow, where viscous terms dominate. And this just says that the flow rate is proportional to the pushing force. The pressure difference is actually how hard uh, we're pushing on the fluid in one direction. But more generally, if you have turbulent flow, where you have Reynolds numbers that are, say, 10,000 and above, then you have a different formula, which is that 1 over r multiplies by the square root of p1 minus p2. This says that as the pushing force increases, the flow rate increases, but it increases less slowly than the pushing force. Another way you can think of this is that for laminar flow, the drag force is proportional to velocity, and for turbulent flow, the drag force is proportional to the square of velocity. And, of course, the pressure difference is the same idea as force, and the flow rate is just a kind of velocity. So if we just flip these around, then we get flow rate is proportional to the pushing force, and here flow rate is proportional to the square root of the pushing force. These are the analogs for these two equations in terms of thinking in terms of drag rather than in terms of pipes. We're next going to examine how to linearize systems. Here we want to treat x and u as deviations about a constant operating point. So x is the variable, or u is the variable that occurs in our differential equation. And we want to think of x as being a deviation, delta x, about an operating point, which we're going to treat as constant. And the key here is that these operating points, x0 and u0, if they're constant, that's going to make everything much easier. The steps are we're going to solve for an operating point where the deviations are zero, and we're going to take a first order Taylor series expansion of an equation. And I'm just going to review real quickly what a Taylor series is. A Taylor series lets us approximate x with the evaluation of x at some value x naught, and then we take the derivative df dx plugging in x naught and multiply by delta x. And then there are further terms, such as 1 half times d squared f dx squared, the second derivative, also evaluated x naught, times delta x squared, etc. And the idea is that if we're talking about small delta x's, then all of these terms that include delta x squared and above, all of these are quite small. And so we end up saying that these can essentially be neglected. And so that allows us to approximate this function with just a constant term, f of x naught, plus a term that's linear in delta x. Here's an example. Uh, let's say we want to linearize f of x is equal to 2x squared around 1. Well, we are going to plug in x equals x naught is equal to 1. That's just 2x squared, evaluate at 1, and that's just going to give us 2. That's the first term in our Taylor series. The second thing that we need is the derivative, also evaluated at uh, x naught. So the derivative of 2x squared is just going to be 4x. And then we need to evaluate that at x naught. 
and that's going to give us 4. So now let's go back down to our Taylor series where we said f of x is equal to f of x naught, that's the 2, plus df dx, also valued at x naught, that's the 4 times delta x. So now we have a, uh, a approximation of f of x near values of x naught equals 1, which is going to be 4 plus, sorry, 2 plus 4 times delta x. Here's a summary of the steps for linearization. We are going to put the deviations into the differential equation. We're going to set those deviations to zero to find the operating point or, and an equilibrium where this is actually going to be a very easy step, uh, as we'll see. Then we're going to use our first order Taylor series expansion where we need df dx evaluated at our operating point. And then we're going to drop any terms beyond this uh, Taylor series expansion. And the result is going to be a linear differential equation for small deviations about the operating point. Here's an example of in a differential equation where we're going to use the same 2x squared that we just examined, but now it's part of a differential equation, so we can show all the steps. So remember that we want to take x and we want to replace it with a constant plus a small deviation, and we want to do the same thing for u. And we said the first thing we want to do is set the deviations equal to zero and find an operating point equilibrium. So what does that mean? Let me just copy the differential equation again, and then I can explain what we're going to do. We have our differential equation, and we're going to plug in a constant plus delta x, and we're going to set delta x equal to zero. So in other words, we're going to plug in a bunch of constants, which are going to have zero time derivatives. So I can cross out any terms with dots in them. And then uh, since we replaced x with x naught, I can just put a zero here and a zero here. And so now we have an operating point equilibrium. It says that u naught has to be equal to 2x naught squared in order for our system to be at equilibrium. And if you recall that we were linearizing about x naught equals 1, that means that we're just going to have u naught is equal to 2. Now let's talk about the Taylor series expansion. So here uh, we can just talk about the deviations. And so what we're in, going to end up with is delta x double dot plus 2 delta x dot plus 2x squared, which if you recall, we already found that 2x squared can be expanded as 2 plus 4 times delta x. We showed that on the previous slide. So here we have 2 plus 4 times delta x, and that's got to be equal to u naught plus delta u. And of course, we already showed that u naught is equal to 2. So these two terms, which we already solved for, we can actually take out. So now we have a differential equation in terms of the delta x's. And this is for near an operating point of x naught is equal to 1 and u naught is equal to 2.